The Chicago History Museum proudly salutes the 17th Annual Making History Award honorees for their outstanding dedication to the city. Early childhood educator Barbara Bowman, philanthropist Renee Crown, media couple Bill Curtis and Donna LaPietra, and corporate leader ITW. Nearly 100 years ago, Chicago financier Byron L. Smith, the founder of Northern Trust Bank, backed an idea for a different kind of business, a manufacturing company. He called it Illinois Tool Works. One of the early customers was fledgling automaker Henry Ford, for whom they produced gears. At that time, in 1912, the automobile industry was just forming, and so that was really the original you know, target market uh, for the company. Today, that company is simply called ITW, a Fortune 200 company with over 800 businesses spread across 50 countries. It manufactures an extraordinary range of products, including cooking equipment, welding products, and even resealable plastic bags. But ITW's greatest assets are its more than 60,000 employees and the selfless work they perform in their own communities. ITW has long believed, really from the beginning, that you know we are important constituents and citizens, if you will, of our community. So giving back to and supporting the communities in which we live and work is really important to the company. To support employee efforts, the ITW Foundation was formed. It provides resources to organizations in ITW communities around the world. In Chicago, support is given to the United Way, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, Junior Achievement, and other organizations recommended by employees. We don't need a lot of plaques or banners to, to recognize the important work that our people are doing. We see it because we're involved, and I think that's what makes us all you know, so proud. The importance of uh, not only providing money, but providing time and talent uh, in those organizations, because that's what makes the difference in our communities. Children have always held a very special place in the heart and mind of Barbara Bowman. An early childhood educator and advocate, Bowman found her calling while teaching nursery school and earning her master's degree at the University of Chicago. While working in Iran and China, she observed how children learn and develop in relation to their culture. I began to understand the differences that culture can make in how children grow and develop. And there are multiple ways of raising developmentally normal children. Bowman also recognized the importance of training for early childhood teachers. In 1966, she co-founded the Erickson Institute with two colleagues and philanthropist Irving Harris. Its mission, to educate preschool teachers to work with at-risk, low-income children to better prepare them as they enter school. One of the things that we do in early childhood is to try to give children the opportunities to learn the skills and knowledge that underlie school achievement. Bowman's commitment to her work remains strong. On any given day, she can be found shuttling between her many leadership roles. And she obviously passed the importance of leadership onto her own daughter, Valerie Jarrett, top advisor to President Barack Obama. The opportunities that we're providing for young children when they're more successful in school, you know that's putting them on the pathway to a more successful life. So it's very rewarding <laughs> to work with little children. There are few in the city of Chicago as dedicated to improving cultural and civic life as Renee Shine Crown. Through dedication and vision, this matriarch of the Crown family has played an unparalleled role in making Chicago one of the most dynamic cities in America. After graduating from Syracuse University, she married businessman Lester Crown. Shepherding their seven children helped her hone her organizational skills and inspired her to volunteer. When you have the large family I have had and then they go out the door, you have certain skills that you have uh, developed and I wanted to put them to good use. Doing things for the city and non-for-profit was a good way to uh, pay back. Scores of Chicago nonprofits have benefited from Crown's altruism, clear guidance, and expert fundraising skills. I love them all. I feel passionate about everything that I've been involved in and very, very rewarding. Though the Crown family name graces many public venues, Perhaps the most popular with Chicagoans is the Crown Fountain, the interactive art sculpture at Millennium Park. It was a little bit of a gamble because it is so unique, 
but it turned out to be even better than we ever thought. It's such a family gathering and it's just a, a, a place of joy. None of this would be possible without the love and support of Lester Crown. I'm honored with this award. I'm humbled and I'm grateful. The 1970s was a time of possibility and new beginnings. For this legendary Chicago couple, it was when they first met in the Channel 2 newsroom. She was a free-spirited writer who yearned to tell compelling stories. He, the solid reporter who would communicate those stories. Over time, Donna LaPietra became an executive producer. Bill Curtis settled in as the anchorman, but also a driven reporter in the field. Along with Walter Jacobson, they created one of the most successful news broadcasts of their time. The Channel 2 News experience for me was the best working experience of my life. I still carry a torch. The mission was to transition from this being a great newspaper town to a television uh, tradition in which we didn't have to go to the papers and cut out the stories. We found our own. They triumphed in the newsroom where Bill broke stories of worldwide importance. Bill is amazing. There isn't anything he cannot do in this business and really do it well. I don't need to tell him anything. He knows what to do. It's great. Although she does. In 1990, Bill and Donna founded Curtis Productions, creating some of the most popular documentary programming for A&E, plus the Peabody Award-winning PBS series, The New Explorers. Wow, what an experience. But this couple's impact spreads far beyond TV. Curtis started the very successful Tall Grass Beef Company, and together with La Pietra, they continue to raise millions of dollars for a variety of nonprofits. We were the privileged people to be on the airwaves, the public airwaves, and therefore we needed to understand our community, give back to our community, and be a part of it. As co chair of the Millennium Park Board of Directors, La Pietra took on the development and fundraising of one of Chicago's most beloved destinations. With her leadership, this very public project was funded primarily by the private sector. For 40 years, we've had the best seat in the house to see Chicago history. We have moved from observers to participants. We're very proud of that. So it's a privilege to do what we do. And then when somebody pays any sort of honor, it means so very much to us. And to come from an institution that is about Chicago, that is about the history of Chicago, and it's saying through this award that we're part of Chicago's history, we couldn't be more flattered. The Making History Awards are generously underwritten by Exelon, ITW, Abbott, The Crown Family, Robert R. McCormick Foundation, David D. Hiller, J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, Anne Lurie, McDonald's Corporation, Molex Incorporated, Alexandra and John Nichols, Northern Trust, John W. and Jean M. Rowe, the Sidley Austin Foundation, and Walgreens.